Hi! On the Woodpecker today, I'm <laughs> making a new turning tool. I really like my turning tools with changeable carbide tips. In fact, ah, they're fancy scrapers. So I've decided to make one more, but I only made the wooden handle. The metal part was made by Pierre. I strongly advise you to check his channel to see how he made it. The link is at the top right of the screen. But I still have to make the handle. I begin by ripping a piece of elm square. When it's done, I make sure both ends are cut square. Then I can mark the center of each end. This will help me later. And to help me to turn this round, I tilt the side blade at 45 degrees and remove all the corners. When it's done, I put one end inside the chuck and align the life center to the center mark I made earlier. Then I make sure everything is super tight before turning this round. When I'm done, hmm, I'm not really done, because I still need to take care of this end. So I turn the piece around, align the life center on my other mark, and finish the job. Now I need to put my steady rest to hold the handle while I'll drill the hole for the metal part of the tool. After putting it in place, I push back the life center where it was before to be sure it's centered. Then I push the three roller blades up to the piece. The last thing to do <laughs> is to make sure everything is fine. Now it's time to put my extra long drill bit into the chuck and drill the hole. Uh, this doesn't work. The lathe is not turning fast enough and the screw at the end of the drill bit is able to screw into the wood. So I speed up the lathe and drill the hole. But since the hole is way deeper than the tailstock can give me, I have to move it several times before I'm able to finish the hole. one less thing to worry about. Now, using my biggest handle, I mark the placement of all its transition. Then I make them more prominent and I'm ready to turn my handle. First, I take the measurement on my original and remove some wood on my new handle up to that measurement. When I'm done, I take another measurement and do the same thing again. I do this up until I have all the transitions well defined. Then I can give it the final shape. <laughs> this is much easier with all those predefined transitions. When I'm done, I sand the endo. But 
but it's not totally finished. I didn't have the ferrule, Pierre did, when I started turning this. So, now with the ferrule, I can finish the tip of the handle. When I'm close to the size I want, I remove a bit of wood near the ferrule and check if I'm at the right size. Mm, I'm not. When it's perfect, I pound the ferrule on the handle. <laughs> this is perfect. Now I can return to the light and finish the turning. The last thing I do before applying the finish <laughs> is to add some useless details on the end though. Ah, just to give it a fancier look. Now I'm ready for the finish. I begin by applying the finish all over the handle. When it's done, I switch the light on and rub on the finish. This will make it shinier and harder. The very last thing to do on the light is to cut the handle. All done. I just need to sand the pointy tip I left at the end because <laughs> this will be very uncomfortable. And finally, I apply some finish there. Now I'm ready to put both pieces together. I begin by applying a bit of epoxy inside the hole. Then I spread more on the metal itself. When I'm happy with the amount of glue I used, I put both pieces together. Okay, after a dozen mallet hits or so, I realized that I'm damaging my workbench. This is not smart. I continue, <laughs> but not without putting a piece of plywood under the tip. When I can push it any further, I wipe the little epoxy that spilled out, and I'm ready for my first test. I'm using what's still on the light for that. <laughs> this works like a charm. The first test was made with the rounded tip Pierre modified. If you want to know how he modified the carbide tip, check his video. The link is at the right corner. But he also modified more tips and left the pointy tips. So I'll make more tests with this tip. This cuts as well as the other tip, but even too much, I would say. It's much easier to push because of the pointy tip. Here, it's more obvious to see the difference between the cut made with the rounded tip and the one with the pointy tip. On the pointy tip side, all the wood broke, but not on the other side. Pierre also brought a non-modified tip, one to cut metal, so I tried it. I didn't film this, but here's the result. The tip jammed into the wood, right here and the piece jump in my face. <laughs> it's not a good idea to use a metal cutting tip to cut wood. But if they're modified, just like this one, it's more than fine. <laughs> one thing I can say is that I'm really happy to add a new tool to my turning tool collection. And Pierre did a darn good job making the metal part of the tool, <laughs> which is something I'm unable to do but I'm very glad with the look of my handle. I hope I've inspired you to make your own tool and see you soon on the Woodpecker.